50 plus plants I'm growing in my spring garden. Here in St. Petersburg, Florida, we are zone 10A, yet I've heard from many of our viewers that they're still dealing with snow and are envious of what we're growing right now. But that doesn't mean it's too early for them to start planning for their spring garden. So I'm gonna share with you what we plan to do and hopefully that will inspire you in your own garden. This area of the raised garden beds gets the most shade throughout the year. So once we harvest these, and even now in these thin places, we're going to start adding lettuce. We have found with most things, if you plant a variety of different types of lettuces, not only do you have a more attractive growing bed, but you have a more attractive salad to eat. The four different varieties that we plan on growing are Black Seeded Simpson, Rosa di Trento Lettuce, Mesclun, and Crisp Mint. I probably mispronounced one or two or maybe all of those, but we have the pictures for you so you get the idea. As you can see here, we already have a crop of carrots growing, but for our springtime garden, we plan on increasing our root vegetable crop. We're going to add more varieties of carrots, radishes, onions, beets, and turnips. For carrots, we'll be planting Scarlet Nantas and Davner's Half Long. For turnips, we have chosen Purple Top White Globe Turnips. Our beets are going to be Chioga and Golden Beets. Golden Beets happen to be both Brian and my favorite type of beet. For onions, we're going to continue with the Dawn Giant Leeks, which is part of the onion family, and two different types of bunching onions. Crimson Forest Bunching and Evergreen Bunching. Our radishes are going to be another one of our favorite, the Daikon Radish, a White Winter Radish, and Celadon. So another vegetable type that we're going to be focusing on for our spring garden is peas and beans. We already have sugar and snap peas established here, but we're going to increase our selection of peas and beans for our springtime garden. We will be adding to the sugar and snap pea, black turtle beans, bush blue lake beans, pinto beans, and the California black eye cow pea. This way we'll have a wide variety of beans and peas to select from that we can use for culinary purposes to make our bellies happy. Now we've moved into our greenhouse where we have some seedlings started. We intend to move these once they mature into our container garden that I'll show you in a moment. These seedlings are tomatoes. In this section we have red homestead. Here we have cherries, super sweet. Here we have romas, delicious beefsteak, and some more homestead. You can tell a tomato seedling by the fine fuzzy particles coming off of the stem. This unique fuzzy element on the stem of tomato plants is one of the reasons why it's always a good idea to plant them deeper when transplanting. That fuzz helps stimulate root growth so that a deeper planted tomato plant has a more extensive root foundation. Along with our tomatoes in our container gardening, we're also going to try our hand at rhubarb and kohlrabi this year. Those are two new vegetables to our garden and we're super excited to see their results. Another plant type that is often forgotten, but I feel is as equally important as the vegetables, is flowers. 
we have a wide variety of flowers that we plan on adding to our springtime garden, not only for the joy of their beautiful blooms, but for all the benefits they're going to give our vegetable plants themselves. My all-time favorite is marigold, so that was a must to add to the list. This year we're going to try dwarf borello. Another favorite of mine, which I always, always, always say the name wrong, is nasturtium. <laughs> this year we'll be planting peach melba. Nasturtiums are a great addition to any garden. We're also going to try butterfly weed, zinnia, verbenia, blue flax, and a mixture of butterfly and bird flowers. We find that adding native wildflowers to your garden is a perfect and quick way to introduce pollinators to your garden. If pollinators know where to find the flowers, they'll soon find the flowers of your vegetables as well, increasing your yield of your crop. And we're back in the raised garden bed to talk about greens. As you can tell by this wonderful display in front of me, we already have a very healthy crop of arugula growing. But besides arugula, we're going to add two different types of mustard greens. We'll be adding Wonderful Red and Greens Green Way. The reason why we selected these mustard greens is as you can tell by this arugula plant, it has decided already to go to seed. Now this normally doesn't happen until the heat of the summer. And that's why we've selected Greens Green Way because it tolerates the heat. Back on the other end of our garden, we have some Napa cabbage growing, but we're going to replant that closer to the front here where it gets more sunlight. Besides the Napa cabbage, we will be adding Charleston cabbage and Chinese cabbage known as pak choy white stem. Another plant variety that Brian and I are both super excited about is squash. Now, to be honest, we've had quite a lot of problem growing squash successfully in our garden. We tend to get these beautiful luscious plants, but when it comes to fruiting, eh, not so good. But I've learned a lot since then, and I'm going to utilize companion planting to the fullest, so that way I can keep as many predators and pests and other issues away from my squash plants and introduce as many pollinators as possible to make sure I get fruit this year. The selection of squash we're going to try planting is Zucchini Black Beauty, Squash Golden Zucchini, Yellow Crookneck, Dark Green Zucchini, Caserta, and Saffron. My final word of advice for you when planting your spring garden is to plant what makes you happy. Not only what makes you visually happy, but what you like to eat. For example, if some particular plant grows really well in your area, but you don't like eating it, I wouldn't recommend planting it. But if there's something that might be slightly tricky, but you absolutely love eating it, I would say it's worth the extra effort to try to grow that plant. In our spring garden, besides the vegetables that we've talked about already, we plan on growing golden batten corn, tall Utah celery, a and C cucumber, lemon cucumber, and Thai red roselle known as the Florida cranberry. These plants are going to be a great addition to the rest of our established plants for us to enjoy the rest of the year. If you've enjoyed this video, look up! There might be another one you'll enjoy equally as well.